Hello everyone and welcome back to the Red YouTube channel and to yet another episode of the Solitary series with me, Jonathan Petz. I want to thank everyone for tuning in for the first couple of the returning Komodo Solitary series. Uh, really excited just to flood you all with uh, Komodo content. Uh, just going to make sure we're coming through loud and clear. I want to make sure that everyone's joined in and can hear me nice, loud and clearly. Just going to wait for the, uh, the chat to catch up here, which will take a few moments. Uh, how's everyone doing? Really looking forward to today's session. We are obviously going to be looking at the Red Control app for iOS and Android. And there's a little something extra we're going to be showing you in the form of the Komodo link adapter as well. Give it a little bit of a sneak peek as to what's going on there as well. So I've got a thumbs up from my team saying the audio is coming through loud and clear. So hello everyone. And I guess we'll kind of start diving in. Uh, do feel free to put some questions in the chat as we go. I've seen there's been a few questions kind of coming in already about the app and hopefully we'll try and answer all of those today. So let's start off with what is the Red Control app? So the Red Control app is a free app on the iOS and the Play Store. We'll show both versions of that today that allows you to fundamentally control every aspect of your Red Komodo 6K camera. You're able to do things, actually I've got a huge long list over here. So we'll go through this list and kind of, we'll go through one by one. So we can fundamentally control all settings within the camera. So any menus we can dive into and control our ISO, our shutter angle, um, frame rate, iris, white balance. We can even do things like calibrate the sensor, format the media, reboot the camera as well. Now, one of the really exciting things that's brand new for Komodo in the Red ecosystem is the ability to monitor a wireless video stream. Now, James Lucarelli showed this off in his last session in connecting to your Komodo. So we're gonna see a bit more of that today. We were able to control, play, control playback and pull stills from that video stream and send those in WhatsApp messages and iMessages to all the crew on set really, really quickly. So that's really cool. Uh, with compatible electronic lenses, uh, with the RF to EF adapter, we can pull focus, we can make iris pulls, we can make marks and rack between those. We'll go through all of that today as well. We can obviously adjust image settings so we can, we can control CDL values, we can control LUTs, frame guides, monitoring outputs, what color spaces we're monitoring in, all through the app as well. We can create custom views as well. This is a really, really exciting bit that allows us to customize a view for the way that we want to work and the features and functions that we need quick access to as well. Camera presets, we can make those and toggle between them if we need an Instagram aspect ratio and then a, oh no, this is a commercial, we need a high speed preset, we can do that as well. And I think most importantly, we can do run stop. We can be remotely away from the camera. It can be on a gimbal or a drone hovering just above us or somewhere difficult to reach. We can press record uh, and there we go, the camera's rolling. So I reckon we now, oh, I've just seen Mikel in the chat. Shout out to Mikel. We'll be discussing a little bit about him a little bit later on. But I reckon we look at where we get the app and the differences between uh, red control and full control because I know there's been a few questions about that. So I'm just going to switch over to my iPhone view here. And here we are inside the app. Now I'm streaming this from my phone, so it might be a little bit of latency, but fundamentally uh, you'll be able to see what's going on. So to download the Red Control app, it is free on the iOS and Play Store. Um, just search Red Control, you'll see it right there at the top. Uh, you tap on that, you can check that it's from us by checking the developer name, Red Digital Cinema. You can download that and get up and running. Now. There has been a couple of questions about, is this app backwards compatible with DSMC1, DSMC2, and Ranger? The answer is no, because Komodo is built on a new red control protocol. This is called RCP2, whereas DSMC1, 2, and Ranger are built on RCP1. Now, many of you will be familiar with uh, Mikhail Lubchansky's app, of whom is called Full Control. So if we search this just for reference, this app won't work with Komodo. It's only for DSMC1, DSMC2, and Ranger. Uh, Mikkel has also spent a crazy amount of time developing this Red Control app. So I think maybe we should all just give him some clapping emojis in the chat for Mikkel, for the amount of hard work he's been putting into all of these apps and this official Red app as well. So hopefully that clears up a few things. The Red Control app is only for the Komodo. So let's, let's go back into the app and, and start going basically. So those of you who want to um, 
connect at home and follow along, I would definitely suggest you go watch James Lucarelli's last session about connecting to your Komodo. This will show you all the ways with ad hoc, with infrastructure, connecting through a laptop, all those things to connect to your Komodo. So I'm gonna skip that and I've already connected to my camera on an infrastructure network. So on this main page, this is where we can see all the devices that are connected to the local network. Um, if I had multiple Komodos, I could bounce between those Komodos and go adjust settings as I would like. Now, one of the cool things in here that we learned in James's last stream was port forwarding. Now, we showed port forwarding where I could connect to a camera from the other side of the world um, through a desktop. You can do that through the app as well. So all you've got to do is type in that IP address into the app and you're able to connect and control a Komodo from the other side of the world. Now, a couple of things here, just in terms of troubleshooting, a couple of the things that I've seen, um, certain carriers on certain devices, they require a data connection when you're connected over Wi-Fi. And obviously, because there's no data connection here, if you're in ad hoc mode, the camera may not appear. And this is carrier and device specific. So if you're trying to connect to the camera and it's not working, go into airplane mode, and hopefully then you will then be able to connect. And nine times out of 10, that is what the issue is. The next one is, oh, I'm not getting a video feed through uh, to my phone app. I'm just gonna switch over to my camera here. And to ensure that you're getting a video feed in, go into your monitoring settings, go into live stream, and just make sure that that's enabled. So we'll just back out of that. And now we're basically ready to go. Now, I've seen a couple of questions about range and those sort of things. Now, range is obviously very dependent on the environment that you're in. If you're in a heavily congested area, your range and connectivity and latency may vary. If you're in a very wide open area, no interference, again, you may see better results there. So definitely check with your IT team. I know on certain jobs I've been on, certain Wi-Fi bands were allocated for certain departments. So DIT might have their own Wi-Fi band on the five gigahertz spectrum to ensure that the phone and the camera are constantly connected and there's no interference there. So just a couple of things to think about uh, when you're going out there and if you're relying on the app consistently, definitely make sure you've got a clean band or as clear as possible. So let's get right into the app. We've gone through those little bits. Let's start having a little play and diving into some of the features. So I've tapped, on the I've tapped on the camera there that I want to connect to, and here we are. We're seeing, we've obviously got a video stream. I'm just gonna wiggle my fingers in front of it there. And this is kind of our main overlay. This is our, our like home page of, just of settings that we kind of felt everyone needs to get access to pretty frequently. So we can do things like change our ISO. We can tap in here, and you can see just how quickly we're changing between all those different values. We can change our resolution. As I said, we can also press record and record some frames. We can view things like the temperature of the sensor. We can toggle our log mode on. We can toggle our peaking, our false color. Now, one thing I will note here is that things like false color and focus peaking won't come through into the app, but they will display on the SDI output and on the LCD on the screen. That's just due to how the video piping feeds are working. Um, so at this time, that's not supported. Uh, we can see our time remaining, we can see our audio bars, uh, it's just stuff we need quick access to, monitor our exposure through here. Now there is a couple of ways to interface with some of the settings in here. And I'm just gonna switch over to this view here just so you can see what I'm doing on the phone here. So on the phone, you can actually tap on any of these kind of movable um, tiles where there's multiple settings. So I can swipe up and I can swipe down. So I haven't physically got to go into the menu and then move between them. Again, just a different way to interface with the app um, if maybe you're, you're not looking at the phone, you're looking at a different feed uh, to kind of judge various settings. So really, really useful there. Um, and also what we can do is this isn't the only orientation that you have to be in. So what you can do is I'm going to undo my rotation and I can turn it sideways and my display might go a bit weird there, there we go. We can turn it sideways and we can then double tap we then get a full frame view. And if I wanted to, I could then mount this on top of my camera with a phone mount. I'll show you a phone mount that I use later. And you can really see just how low latency that is. Absolutely crazy how low latency that is. Personally for me, very, very usable, but obviously it's up to you guys as to the amount of latency that you're kind of happy with. So that's pretty cool. But one thing that you will have noticed as I 
swoosh back into frame here, is we've got a number of stars on this kind of main homepage. Now, these stars are basically customizable pages. So I'm just going to tap down to this page down here, and you'll see we've got all of these various blocks that we can, if we double tap on any of those, this is the list of everything we can assign for our own view. So I'm just going to scroll through some of these here just so you get an idea of how much data and how many options you really have in terms of choosing what you have displayed. So we could have our log view. So I can just assign that there and then I can tap that and then I get the log feed coming through. I've got a quick toggle. I haven't got to go into a menu. I haven't got to go through pressing buttons on a camera. Let's double tap and go through some other ones. Let's go right down to the bottom and see what we've got. Uh, we can see the subnet mask. We can see which internet connection we're on. We can see the channel we're connected to as well. Um, we can toggle magnify. I saw a question earlier about magnify, actually. And with the magnify, you can't magnify in the app. But when you magnify, you'll see a little box and you can move that around. So what we'll do is we will come in and we'll turn on LCD magnify. So I'm going to assign that to a button there. And if I turn on LCD magnify, you see that little box has come up. Now, if I tab over to this screen here, you see that we've magnified. Now, I can move that box around and you can see what I'm doing there. So that's how the magnify works. You can't you know, uh, view a magnified feed in the app at this time. So let's just come out of that LCD magnify. We've come back there. So I've already made a couple of presets just to show you kind of what's possible. But what I think would be really cool is when you guys get the app, when you get your cameras, or those of you who already have the cameras, take a screenshot of your custom pages and tag us on Instagram, Red Digital Cinema, or send us them, solitary series at red.com, and me and the team will go through some of them and find our favorite ones, and we'll share them in the next session, because I'm sure you guys will come up with some really cool overlays that are probably way more efficient than kind of what I've come up with. So let's go into my first one here. Um, I used to work as a DIT, so the first one I thought of was, if I was working as a DIT, what would I want quick access to? So I'm seeing things like my power information, how much battery is left, what is the time remaining on the card, and how long until I've got a shout at the AC and the DP. If I've only got a minute left, can we reload, please? Um, camera ID, if I've got multiple cameras on set, which one am I connected to? Oh, A cam, okay, perfect. I should be on B cam, I'll switch over. I can toggle things like my false color on. So if I'm monitoring in my DIT tent, I've got an SDI feed coming in, I haven't got to run over to the camera to enable false color. Obviously, we can't view it in the app, but at least on my SDI feed, I can be toggling that very, very easily. I've got my exposure um, raw indicators. That's always super, super useful. Um, and then for me, especially, changing lookup tables very, very quickly. So a DP might be like, oh, can we get our night interior LUT, please, Johnny? I can then come in very easily, change the LUT. I can turn the LUT on and off for them on the fly. Haven't got to run in there and mess about with menus. So that's really, really nice. Just go back to my normal LUT there. Sensor temperatures, I've got a snapshot as well. Now the snapshot is really, really cool. Um, this is one of the things I think was probably one of my favorite features when I found out about it. And this is basically the ability to take an image from that feed and have it saved to your camera roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my hand in the frame here. I'm then gonna take a snapshot. And then when I go back to my photos, you'll see that image has then saved there and I can then send that off to a DP, send it off to an art director for some references. Maybe if we're on a location scout, um, a location scout could be connected to the camera and just pulling images from the camera and not having to take photos on their camera. So again, there's so many really cool things you can do with this. Obviously, if you're working on a, on a big budget Hollywood film, ensure you've got permission to take stills from that feed, but it's still something that's super useful to have. Other little bits here, jam time code. I can check the actual time code itself. I can view the clip name and also save a log. You know, in the event someone knocks the power by accident, pulls a cable out, and I wasn't sure what went on, I can save a log without having to run over to the camera. Or in the event there is an issue, there's many times where I've forgotten to go save a log and I can just tap this button here and good, I've got that log saved. I can do it fully remotely. Now the cool thing here is the presets. So I've made a load of preset buttons that I can switch between very, very quickly. So let's say, for example, I've got my, we're shooting 6K um, open gate, so 17 by nine. We're shooting 240 to one frame guides. 
and we want other ones that we can quickly bounce between. So a high speed widescreen, so 6K 50 FPS, then a 4K 60. Maybe I've got some weird aspect ratio guidelines for a VFX shoot where they want a one-to-one -one, uh, crop or something, or they want a Instagram four by five feed. I can have all of these guides and move between them very, very quickly. I can also view more than that. I can view all of them that I've got saved in the camera as well. So again, super, super flexible. Another one that I've kind of thought up was, was as a focus puller, as an AC. If you're an AC and you're working with the camera, what am I going to want to be using? Eject media, secure format, reboot the camera. I can get into playback here as well. I can view the lens focal length that I'm on, the iris if we're using compatible electronic lenses. I've got my SDI magnify and my focus peaking. So if I'm getting a wireless feed from a Teradek, I can then toggle peaking from the camera and not have to do it on my monitor if I don't want to. And again, fan control, I can roll from here as well, and I can also obviously make adjustments to those presets. I've just seen Stephen. Can you talk about the Komodo Link? We are getting to that, don't worry. You can see it's mounted to the camera. We'll, we'll, we'll do that at the end. I know everyone's excited about that. So that's kind of the customizable pages. Now you can get some extra buttons. So maybe you don't need the video feed because you're monitoring an SDI feed. You can tap the purple squares in the top right hand corner and you get a load of extra buttons. So if I come down to my preset here, you can see I can come in and I can add a whole new extra set of buttons. I can come in here and let's just have, let's just pick one, um, camera info. I can assign that to an extra set of buttons at the very top as well. So let's move on to some of our next tabs. So in this tab, this is kind of our image overlay, image preview, image settings pane. And I'm gonna start with the coolest thing here, and that is stream overlay. So what this is, is it's basically the ability to overlay a PNG file on top of the stream that the phone's seeing. So this is super cool if maybe you're a splinter unit or you're going back to reshoot something and you want to make sure your frame is exactly lined up. You can export a PNG file, import it into the app, and then overlay it to ensure you're lined up exactly perfectly. Now, some of the examples that are preloaded into the app are mainly frame guides. So if we kind of scroll down here, um, you can see I've got my Fibonacci sequence, I've got Keops, Nexus, that's a pretty crazy one. Um, and again, we can choose the opacity of these as well. So if you want thirds, vertical thirds, different opacities, you can do that as well. Or you can press the plus button there and you can import a PNG of your choice and overlay that onto the stream. So let's start moving on through the rest of these. So I'm just gonna exit out of that. I'm gonna press none because I don't need those. We can change our live stream quality here. A lower live stream quality will mean less latency, but obviously a lower image quality. A higher one will mean a higher image quality, but potentially more latency. Another cool one here is the CDLs and lift gamma gain. So I can enable this, and when I tap on CDL, it's basically like I'm working in Resolve. Obviously, I don't quite have my physical, um, you know, tangent ripple kind of suite, but, you know, if you're that way inclined, you can come in and you can make adjustments on the fly should you want to. Now, you're shooting a raw file, so it's all metadata. If you, if you really like doing that and you kind of want to do CDLs on the fly, that's a super cool way to kind of come in and do it. And again, I can back out of this. I can go into lift gamma again if that's the way I want to work. As you can see, I can kind of bring down the exposure there. I can stop that there. Again, reset it all. It's all metadata at the end of the day. I can also preview my LUTs. So earlier I was showing we can switch between them. I can come in and I can actually preview my LUTs in here and get a bit of an idea of kind of what they're going to look like on the image. Other bits down here is the presets. Oh, we had a little bit of a crash there. We are live, classic. So we'll just come back into the app here. Give that a moment to reconnect. Again, super, super quick. Let's go back into our presets section. And these are ones that I've already pre-made. So I made these in the app and I can now tap new preset and basically anything I want, I can now generate in the app and that'll be saved to the camera as well. So if I wanted to have one that is a certain lookup table at a certain, with a certain CDL value, I can have that toggle on. So maybe the DP's like, oh, on the fly, let's make a night LUT. Mount that LUT and then have the CDLs and we'll bring down the shadows a little bit and maybe cool it off a little bit to give it a little moonlight kind of feel. We can then save that as a preset and toggle that on and off very, very quickly. 
The last thing in here, in this little section, is the guides. So we can create custom guides to be overlaid onto the image. So if we want to have anything from a 240 to one mode to a very specific one to one, or again, Instagram or TikTok frame lines that are vertical, we can do that as well. So you can export the presets. Yes, that is correct. So if we come back into the presets, you can then see that if I do, uh, oops, sorry. If I tap on the preset itself, you can see I've got a little export button. So I can tap that export button and you can see that I can then export that to a message and it's basically a text string that then basically gets exported out and somebody can then re-import that onto their device as well. Or you can import it onto a CFast card. You can save it from here onto the CFast, take the CFast card out and then put that into another Komodo as well. So quite a few different ways you can kind of save and move presets around very, very easily. So let's come out of this and let's move over onto audio. So audio, this is a really cool one because this is something that caught me a bit off guard. Um, you'll see in the top left there, we've got audio stream. So not only can you monitor the video feed coming out, if you plug in a set of headphones, oh, I did rotation there by accident, you can actually monitor the audio stream coming out. Now, we're not trying to replace the sound guys, don't worry. This is just a super cool little feature. Maybe, you know, in all of these worlds of socially distant sets, you set a camera up for an interview and you have to leave the room or back away. You can at least monitor the feed, especially if you've got something like a, a three and a half mil uh, shotgun mic attached where you haven't got re uh, remote um, headphones to listen to. You can monitor that through here and we can make adjustments through this as well. So again, I can come in, I can adjust the gain, I can bring it down, I can bring it up. I can also swipe up and swipe down like we did at the very beginning with the ISO and other features there. So again, lots of flexibility here with controlling your audio. You can mute the output, you can change which source you're using. So I'm using the internal microphones here, obviously. We can jam the time code, we can change to sync, we can change to external time code if we've got a ambient locket box nano or a tentacle sync attached, all those kind of things. So let's move on to the next tab here, and this is the focus and the iris. This is really cool because with the compatible EF and RF mount, you can use EF lenses that have electronic control to control both sets of parameters, which is really cool. So previously, for those of you familiar with full control, you could control the iris, but now you can also, you control the focus, sorry, now you can control the iris and you can see I'm stopping the lens down there and then opening it up. And this is really cool because you can connect on multiple devices and you can have one person, keep doing that rotation, one person doing focus and one person doing iris both at the same time. And I've got my Android device here, so I'll show that in a few moments. So one cool thing in here is the ability to set marks. Now, obviously, maybe there's a few ACs or focus pullers looking at this and going, oh, that's nothing like a Preston. But there's some cool functionality here that if you want to do maybe an, aff an affordable motion capture setup or there's something that you're very specific about and you want to hit an exact point, you can have that and choose the speed at which to do that. So let's do that here. So I'm going to focus onto the GDU lens there at the back. That is me focused. I'm gonna set a yellow marker for that one. I'm then gonna to come to close focus and focus up on this DSMC1 carbon red dragon. That looks good to me. I'm then going to make a mark there. And what I can now do is I can go into lens tools and I can set the, the rack speed to go between those two points and I can also choose the type of roll off I want on the focus. So I can go into my rack speed. Uh, let's say we want a five second rack speed. And let's say we want a slow start and then it ramps up. So we're gonna come back out of there and I'm now gonna tap on my yellow one and I'm just gonna hold my phone so you can see that I'm not doing anything here. And you can see now in the app that is now doing my focus pull for me. Now I can make it faster, I can make it longer. But you can see now that has now pulled to the lens at the back there, all done for me. Same goes for iris. I can come into iris, I can set a mark here, I can then set a lower mark here, and again, I can tap that, and over the course of five seconds, you can see no cheating here, the app is then controlling that iris pull for me. Now obviously, as this lens isn't de-clicked, you see the clicks, but at least if you did a really quick rack, a quick rack, you could you know, maybe hide it a little bit if you're moving inside and outside. 
Now what I'm going to do is, as we're talking about the apps here, I'm going to show both of them working at the same time with an Android device. So I'm going to flip over to my camera here. And what I'm going to do is, I am going to stop this down a little bit. And I'm going to put my Android phone into the screen here. And then going to connect on that device as well. You can see I'm still connected on the iOS device, still pulling focus. I'm then going to go into my iris here, tap into iris. Now I'm going to set a marker there. I'm then going to set a marker there as well. I'm then going to go into my lens tools. We're going to have a rack of, let's say, 10 seconds. And I'm then going to do a focus pull during that period in time as well. So I'm going to tap the green marker there. That has now started. And I am now going to pull to my yellow marker at the back there where our lens was. Maybe I'm going to go back to the start again. And you can see the app is doing that. We're also getting that video feed coming through as well. So again, multiple people can connect and control various aspects about the camera and the lens. So I'm just going to leave that phone in there for the moment because we're going to be coming back to the Android device in a moment. And we can now move on to kind of the menus and kind of the last few bits here. So any menu functionality, we can kind of go into anything about the menus. We can come in and change that's in the camera. That doesn't change. That's the same. If you can change it in camera, you can do it in here. And finally, within the app, we can also lock it. So you can hand the phone over to someone or have it propped up and be rest assured that you're not going to knock something and turn over by accident. So I can press the record button here and you can see that that record button is not flagging. I'm not going to do it by accident. I'm not going to format a card by accident either. So you can lock that down. So I reckon now what we'll do is we'll go onto the Android device. I'll show you the same functionality very, very quickly. Um, and then I think we'll go over onto the Komodo link. I'm just going to make sure I've covered everything I wanted to cover for this section. Yes, we have. That's good. So I'm now going to ping up my Android UI. Here we are in the Android app. I'm just going to pick this up out of that frame. And obviously, we've got all the same settings. You can see Mikel's worked very hard to make the apps look the same. Now, any of you who make apps or are familiar with any kind of development know that not only is it crazy difficult to develop for two different platforms, but to also have them work in the same way even harder. So it's amazing they both work in the exact same way. There's still some features that are missing, but Mikel is working hard to get all these features rolled out to the Android app as well. But, you know, things like focus, we've got the monitoring feed, we can rotate the device and do full screen. All the kind of key functionality is here in the app. So we're obviously connected wirelessly. I think it's time we look at the Komodo link adapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to my view here. And you can see that we have it already attached to the camera. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a show and tell for you guys here. I'm going to pick the camera up. And you can see that we have, if I focus up here, you can see that we've got it attached to the camera. Two screws connects directly to the pins on the top of the camera. It gives us a USB-C output. And this allows us quite a lot of functionality, actually. Now, I'm just going to show you how to connect it first. And then I'll kind of run through uh, a couple of little housekeeping bits about the functionality and kind of what's coming for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Android phone. I'm going to go to the home screen because currently we're connected over Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my settings. And I'm going to go into my network and internet and then hotspot and tethering. So this is where we're going to be allowing this functionality. Now, one of the things I will say here is that on an Android device, you do not need to have a cellular connection so you don't need to have a SIM card in your Android phone to get this to work. But on iOS, you will have to have a data connection for the link to work. This is due to how iOS works. It's something we can't get around. Um, so things like iPod touches and iPads that don't have a cellular connection are not going to be able to work with this. So note there, there's no SIM card in this phone. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to go into menu. I'm going to go down to communication. I'm going to go to Komodo link adapter. Oh, if I tap on that properly. And you can see it says NA. Now, what we're going to be doing is enabling USB tethering. So as soon as I plug in this cable into the phone, you'll see USB tethering gets enabled. So I plug that in. USB tethering then ungraze itself. I can then tap on USB tethering. And now we are tethering between the Komodo. You'll see in a moment an IP address pings up. That confirms to us that we now have 
a connection between them. So let's back out of this and we're going to go to our home screen. We're going to go back into the Red Control app and we're going to do rescan. Now, obviously, the camera is still emitting a wireless feed, but now we can also see two cameras have popped up. One is the wireless feed and one says link, and that is our link from the camera to the phone. So I'm going to tap on that now. That will take a moment to connect. And we are now connected. If I now go home, you can see if I kind of bring the phone in as well, because obviously I'm cabled to the phone and the camera, so there might be a bit of latency in the video feed you're seeing. But when they're side by side, you can see incredibly low latency. Any of you who have tested it, you know, with wireless, every now and again, you may get a bit of breakup, but with this hardwired solution, look at that. Really, really low latency there. So if you're in a very tricky situation where there's a lot of heavy network usage and you can't get it to work because of how congested it is, a cabled solution could be fantastic. Now, one thing you may note is you see my charge light. Um, this isn't any degree of a fast charger. The Komodo's only got so much power it can output. So it can only output about, I think it was one watt of power. So it's by no means a fast charger. It may keep it topped up a small amount, but it will kind of slowly deplete. So definitely ensuring you've got a big battery on your phone is definitely going to be key here. And that's simply limited because the Komodo is so low power, so low power draw to get those super long run times. It hasn't got quite enough juice to output it. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'll show you a little mount that I've got that I can mount onto the camera. Uh, I've got a little, you know, cheeky little phone mount that I can get on. And then you can basically have a super small, low profile monitor set up. So if I get this into the mount, try not to turn the phone off at the same time. That would be useful. There we go. Just going to lock that. You can now screw this in onto the top. And then I'll just go through a few other little bits in regards to iOS and doing this as well. So let's get this screwed in. I can then rotate it sideways. There we go, get that screwed in. Let's bring the phone down so you guys can see as well. Get that there. Now I'm just going to turn my rotation uh, on. Uh, where's my rotation? Is that my rotation? Yeah, there we go. Back out of there. We can see we're now getting the rotation. I'm gonna turn off my phone UI there just so then it's not distracting. And if I just focus up on this, I can then double tap on that to go full screen. And you can see now I've basically got a monitor on top of my Komodo that I can now run and gun around with really, really nicely all through that cable. Now I'm just going to switch back to my view over here because a couple of little things I just want to mention in regards to the Komodo link. So it currently supports iOS and Android. But the latest iOS 14 update has broken the communication for many, not just us, um, just before launch. So there's three different solutions and timeframes for getting the iOS functionality back up and running. Um, the first one is reverting back to iOS 13 to get it to work. The second one is wait for Apple to fix this. But again, there's no timeline on that. And the third, in the meantime, the engineering team have found a workaround. So we're looking to get that out as soon as possible uh, but there might be a few extra steps to get it working on iOS. And again, just to reiterate, on iOS, you will need to have a cellular connection. Um, on that, you need to have a SIM card uh, with that as well. Uh, but some other cool things in regards to the Komodo link adapter is that if, where is, where have I put it? If you have a USB-C to Ethernet cable, there's some cool functionality that will hopefully be coming down the line for IP connections and other functionality. So I'll kind of leave you a little bit of a teaser there from what the team here have told me, uh, but obviously we'll hopefully be able to talk more about that in the future. So I think for the moment, how, how long have we been? 46 minutes. Uh, I'll kind of open this up to the house here and see kind of what questions you have. Is there anything you want me to go back and go over, show you again in any of the apps? Um, I know there's a bit of a delay here between me and then obviously you guys all viewing it. So I will look down to my chat to see if there's anything else you want me to cover, even just with the Komodo in general. Um, we can obviously go over that here. I've seen James and the gang answering a couple of questions in there, a couple of little chats going on. They've been helping out, doing good. I can see Mikel's in there. Hey, Mikel again. Looks like he's been answering some questions as well. How about data transfer with the link? Um, so that's one of the things that the team have said that uh, Ethernet connection potentially in the future for remote downloading could be a possibility. Um, let's have a look, see what else is coming in. We, 
will there be the ability for more FPS in advance? Uh, I'm not sure on kind of future functionality in terms of time lapses. I've seen some questions there and custom FPSs. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't obviously got access to that. That's for the engineering and the product team to kind of come up with. Um, but definitely keep suggesting those things. They always want to hear what people's priorities are. So definitely it's, it's good to hear all of that feedback. Um, will it be able to give a higher res feed than through Wi-Fi, i.e. 720? Um, so the feed that will come out will always be 720. It's just lower latency. Um, so, you know, everything is, as, is exactly the same. That feed will always be 720p. It will just be much lower latency and much more stable. So if you're in an environment where, you know, you don't want to have a phone nearby or, as again, I said earlier, there's a lot of interference and it's very, very difficult. I've been on some sets where you can't even get your phone out and have a connection because there's so much going on with different um, Teradex and sound devices and those kind of things. So that's definitely a, a thing that's super beneficial just to have super low latency. Again, just on those feature requests that are coming in, the more we can have of those, if you go onto red.com, there is a feature request page. So you can go submit those and that's actually a really useful metric to see what people are requesting through that kind of official platform. Autofocus, ah, autofocus on this, for me at least, I've been really enjoying the autofocus on this. Um, as somebody who's always been going for the manual way of doing things, so far with the crop of, uh, I've had the uh, 24 mil GDU lens attached and the Sigma attached, I've been really, really impressed with it so far. Um, you know, whip panning, moving in, tracking very, very slowly, all those kind of things. Uh, but I think in a future session, we're gonna be kindly touching on that and showing off a little bit more. Um, but it's definitely, at least for me, I found very usable in the sense of if you're doing a sit down interview, all those kind of things, the ability for if someone's leaning backwards and forwards and having that little box you can move around, I, I think is really, really good. I'll just let a few questions come in now. Um, I could go off on a ma massive tangent and try and show you running around the store with, with the autofocus, but I know we're getting up to 50 minutes here, so maybe we should come back and do an autofocus session. Let us know um, in the comments if you want to have a whole session where we test the autofocus and do different things there. Definitely let us know. In terms of the focus peaking edge coming through into the app, um, as I'm not the developer of the app, that is definitely a Mikel question. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't want to put him on the spot here, so uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure at this moment in time. I'll just give it a few more, a few more moments. Will the autofocus of the Komodo come to the Gemini? So the difference here is that the Komodo sensor has the PDAF or the phase detect autofocus points built into the sensor. It's actually a sensor design. It's not a software thing. So sadly, it can't come to any of the DSMC2 Ranger or DSMC1 systems. This is the latest tech built into the sensor. AF session, definitely. Okay, Luca, we can definitely get that, get, get that on the list. We can do some cool tests with that. Let me get James running around with uh, doing a surfboard or with his dog or something. Um, but I think we're seeing I think I hopefully answered everyone's questions there. Um, obviously, feel free to drop some comments down below. Oh, one more may have come in. Uh, production Komodo, oh, just some ordering Komodo questions. Um, but yeah, drop some comments down below for what you wanna see or drop us a, um, uh, an email, solitaryseries at red.com with what you want to see next. We definitely wanna hear about what you guys wanna do. Um, but definitely subscribe for more. James Lucarelli is coming very soon with gimbals, drones, and everything else. So accessories to configure it, good ways, tips and tricks to balance it with the Komodo, what you can do, and all those kind of things. So again, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Big shout out to Mikel for making an amazing app. Um, it's been a joy to use. And thank you very much. And as Clay says from RedTech, go shoot something. There's one thing I love as much as shooting movies, and that's riding Harley Davidsons. So when Red approached me to test their new camera, the Komodo, in extreme conditions, I said, hell yeah. There is a gathering of hardened riders who come from all over the world, beasts of the cold who wait all year for the snow and ice. Vintage as the bikes they ride, they're known as the frozen few.
I took my team on the roam to observe these men who honor long traditions of Harley Davidson. Riders who challenge the boundaries of mortal blood and metal bikes. This is the smallest cinema camera I have ever used. 6K. And combined with the light Xena lenses, we pushed it to the limit. We strapped them down, smothered them in sleep, forcing them to withstand the harshest conditions. Tight spaces, speeding cars on bikes. It is straight up the most versatile camera that I have ever used. It's like cinema in the palm of your hands. I hunted down the frozen few to test Red's newest digital camera. But instead, this tribe of Harley men took me in as a brother. They gave me something I'll never forget. I was honored to be a part of this and shared the story of these men. And I am extremely honored to be a part of the Red family. Thank you for the opportunity. Aloha.